Okay, this is going to be a quick video over um, discussing Project Atomic, which is a thin uh, Fedora um, system image that is designed to pretty much solely to run Docker containers. Um, there's some management stuff. It leverages System D, um, and if if you want to cluster them together, it uses a um, technology called Gear D to uh, to get your uh, Docker cluster working all together. Um, but this is just going to touch on the very high uh, points and how to um, get going quickly in an OpenStack environment. So I'm at the Project Atomic website, which is project, projectatomic.io. Um, if you hit, click here, just get started. Um, here you can see if you're in an OD, uh, RDO environment, an OpenStack environment, which I've got another video on how to set that up. I'm going to be deploying this in an OpenStack environment. So if you want to know how to set up the OpenStack environment, you can see my other video in the video description. Um, so we're going to download this uh, Cumulink, which is the image format that uh, OpenStack will expect. And we'll just save that. Okay, now we have the image downloaded. Um, the reason I'm downloading it locally and rather uh, rather than just importing it directly into Glance and giving OpenStack the link to import it directly is that the image is compressed and even though OpenStack will handle compressed images, I find that sometimes it doesn't detect the image format properly if it's compressed. And so I'm gonna decompress it locally and then upload it to OpenStack from my local machine here. So we're going to go ahead and decompress this first. Um, I did try to upload the compressed image to OpenStack directly, and it uh, and it gave me the the device was not bootable. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what it is um, about the import process that uh, doesn't detect the right format, but. Now we have the decompressed version of it. If we come into OpenStack here, I can go create image, I'm just calling atomic. Um, upload it from my local machine here in QCAL2 format. If we come over here, we can do a QMU image info and check what the virtual size of the image is here. It's eight, eight gigabytes. So I'm going to um, make the minimum disk size eight gigabytes because for some reason OpenStack doesn't detect that automatically. Um, and then we can create the image. Uh, you can see that it's uploading down here. And that will import the image into Glance and uh, once it gets done saving that, we'll be able to launch an instance. Um, all right, it's already done, launch. Call it atomic. And we'll get that going. Uh, after the image copies out of Glance into Nova, Nova will be starting up the VM. Um, I'm going to go ahead and associate a floating IP with this because we're going to need to get access to it from the external network. So. Now that it's up and running, we should be able to go to the console and see what's going on here. We can see it coming up. All right, we're at the login prompt. So uh, this image doesn't include uh, cloud in it, which you might be used to if you run Ubuntu cloud instances or something like that. Um, it just, you just log in as root um, and there's no password on the root account initially and you can just change it to whatever you want. Um, and that will allow you to log in over SSH. So once we've set that, we can go back and I can get my floating IP, go over here and SSH root to this IP address. And now we're in. So that's all, so we're, we're in the Project Atomic environment now and you can see that it's very uh, bare bones um, and most of these things in the root directory are uh, links into slash user, which is how uh, 
Project Atomic manages its system images through a, a, a technology called uh, RPM OS tree, which you can kind of see a remnant of here. And we're not going to go into that in this tutorial, but just to kind of see uh, how that works. So if we go to back to the Project Atomic website, they've got the quick start guide here. Um, I'm going to run this real quick. Um, it's not particularly interesting, but it will get the Fedora um, Docker layers onto the system. So you can see that in action. If we do that, um, since I've just spawned this up, it doesn't have anything in the local uh, image repository. So it's going to download the Fedora layers for Docker. And that'll take just a second here. If we come down here, you can go ahead and see that this is how you're going to enable um, a web UI called Cockpit. Um, and that it's a really uh, nice web UI. It's still under heavy development, um, but it's a system management and container management UI. And we'll take a look at that because that's uh, pretty neat. So we're going to go ahead and just copy these lines over. And you can see that uh, we're going to need to open up port 1001 uh, in this guest image. Uh, so if we go in here, Access and security, um, manage rules, add a rule. We're going to let uh, port 1001 through, and OK. So firewall should be set now. If we go to our um, IP address here, 1001. Okay, it's going to give you this because it uses uh, HTTPS with a self-signed certificate, so just accept. Um, then you can log in here. It's uh, PAM authenticated, so you can just do root um, and then the password that you set. And here you go. Here's our host. Um, and this is, uh, so Cockpit can manage multiple hosts and then you can drill down into each host here. And there's uh, all sorts of things that you can do to um, manage the system from here. There's lots of system information. You can change the host name. Um, you can see what services are running. You can see your logs. Those are a little chatty. Um, your networking situation. User accounts. Containers is, is the most interesting one. Um, from a Docker perspective, you can see that it has that it's aware of the container that I ran, the Hello World container thing that I ran, um, and you can come in here and you can start, stop, delete um, some of your uh, containers. So one thing that's really cool is I can start a Docker container from here, and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and attach to a terminal. So that you can see kind of how this works. Okay, that was weird. Not sure why it failed that first time. Um, but we are now inside the Docker container. Um, and one thing you can do is you can actually get a console in here and it mirrors this console here. So if I shrink this up a little bit. You can see that we're looking at the same thing in the web UI that is being echoed to the terminal that we attach to with Docker. So uh, that's really cool. You can come in here and change resource limits, CPU priority. Um, you can start, stop, uh, restart. And so that's a, it's a really neat interface for seeing. And you can see that as you, know, you get more and more containers on the system, that you can drill down and get uh, per container stats on uh, how much memory they're using, how much CPU they're using. And uh, 
it's a really neat management interface. So hopefully uh, this shows you uh, at a very high level what Project Atomic is all about and uh, hope you get something out of it.